Hey, folks. Patrick again from Soaring Profits with my uh, special host here as well. James. Special. special I don't special. know why you always call me a special host. Is it because you think I'm special? Like, or There's other names. I'm unique? There's or, other names. Uh, yeah, there are, there are other names. There's other we'll names. We'll talk about it off camera because I feel right. like that might get us banned. That's it. <laughs> Welcome Folks. to Soaring Profits again. Yeah. Uh, today's so we, topic is super interesting. You go ahead. I'm going to stop cutting you off now. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'd appreciate that. You, sir, are special. Appreciate special. it. Special. Uh, so, folks, we've got an interesting topic here tonight. And uh, basically, it's just the difference between life and death for possibly about 7 billion people on the planet. So, not that we're going to get into anything really heavy or, you know, controversial like that but uh it sounds like nuclear wars right around the corner just nuclear war nothing huge you know. yeah like just a world annihilation uh i believe you know that, uh the whole uh elon musk has the the noah's ark already don't uh, worry about that i got my golden ticket did you get yours I didn't get mine in the oh, mail yet. This is, uh, this is going to be awkward. Uh, apparently, you have to have so many subscribers. We're not <laughs> you have to have so many yet. subscribers. Working My side kind of is getting it. Right. Uh, but yeah, no, uh, I know we're joking around and this is no joking matter. But uh, Finland and Sweden uh, have now uh, decided and proclaimed that they will join NATO. No, NATO is seriously considering it. Uh, I think they have some... Uh, I believe Turkey is kind of trying to put up some blockades about it for uh, different reasons because they believe uh, Switzerland is harboring some sort of terrorism or some things, but it looks like it's going to go ahead anyway. Sweden, yep. Yeah. yeah. yeah uh, well, I think I, I think there's a lot of things going on here, and I think where we are right now in uh, the media, the way that it's being portrayed, obviously we're not getting the full picture. No, uh, and, and for us here, folks, is that all of the things that we're bringing to you are, are things that are our opinion based. We don't have anybody live in the field. We don't have any field agents reporting back to us, obviously. Just so one second. Is, Harold upstairs is telling me something. Right. Exactly. <laughs> no, I got nothing. There's nothing. So, uh, so all of this information is we're taking, we ascertain it, and then we kind of, you know, break it down and we put on our caps and we, we deliver it. Right. The, the The thing that I struggle with in a big way is that. The Russian military right now has portrayed Ukraine as a special military operation. So that's that's what they've called it, a special military operation. The issue with that is, is that for the last month here, month and a half since this has all started, the West, you know, Canada, United States, you know, Western ide ideological countries have been saying, like, look, look, look at Russia. They're useless. They can't they can't fight this. They can't win. They can't beat the Ukrainians when. It hasn't been an all-out war. So what we've been having here is the last little while is that we've been told that this is an all-out war and Russia's getting, you know, beaten by people with pitchforks out in fields. Well, it's not true, right? Russia has named this a special military operation, and they have taken the areas where they've wanted with relative ease. Uh, and, and that's just truthful. When they rolled into the Dansk, they uh, completely took it. When they moved in towards Kiev, they completely took it. They've allowed corridors for people to be able to meander and push through and, and evacuate people. Um, and that's where we've had these backlogs of you know military movements where they've stopped. Uh, this, again, I can't say this enough. This is a special military operation. This isn't Russian-Ukrainian war. So now what I'm saying is, is that we have countries like Finland and Sweden that are now, if we believe the narrative that's being being told to us, that the only reason Russia went in is because of uh, the Ukrainians wanting to join NATO. Okay, if that's if that's the West, that's what they've been telling us this whole time that Putin's a big meanie and he wants to go in and make sure that uh, the Ukraine does not become a NATO country. Well, what are we doing with this other group if we know that that is going to elicit a response? So I'm getting to the point where I'm I'm thinking that this is becoming a very planned, large-scale military operation that's being driven predominantly from the West. That's my thesis. <laughs> well, you said it very well. So I uh, I'm not sure. Like they are saying that uh, that Russia has is deep in their cups. They pushed their their full force against Ukraine, and you're absolutely right. Uh, the media is pushing the fact that the Ukraine, and I'm not saying the Ukraine people aren't heroes. They are obviously heroes. They're doing their best in a very tough situation. 
uh, but they're they're portraying it that uh, Ukraine is holding Russia back. Um, if you look at the maps of the war, uh, Russia is fairly in deep, like you're saying, uh, and it does appear that uh, maybe not with ease, like you're portraying, but it does appear that they are in a constant forward march. Um, and it looks like they will achieve their end goal, which I don't think is to take over all of Ukraine. I think it's to take over part of Ukraine like they did last time and then stop and go surrender it and uh, we'll back off. So I, I would guess if I were uh, thinking in the ways that you were thinking, that the reason that Finland and Switzerland, who have sizable armies, like we're not talking, Ukraine has an army, but F Finland and Switzerland have sizable armies. They have way Sweden. more in Sweden, 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 yep. Sweden, Sweden, Sweden. I do that. You guys know that. You've been the watching. other, other, the other, 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 other Sweden. Uh, they have sizable armies. They have size. They have more uh, economic force. They wouldn't be as easy a pushover. So sure. if you, if you can say that they're going to join NATO, that they may become a, a present or future threat, then like the bear gets tapped on the shoulder and goes, whoa, now I have something behind me. Now I have to turn around and I may have to split my forces. So if we think like they're telling us that all the forces, Russia's forces are in Ukraine, well, yeah. you're going to have Russia now will have to pull out some Russian forces to strengthen the North if, like you said, we're believing that, that they're a credible threat, which really in military strategy, if you are surrounded by all sides, which they yep. will be, that means right. that if Ukraine joins NATO and then Finland joins NATO, uh, yep. th there is technically American forces within striking s on all sides. Well, and, and that's where and that is a credible from. threat. What, no doubt, but then what do they do? So now, now you've painted the situation where this was two independent nations, Russia and Ukraine, that were separate nations. There's wars around the world every day. Yes. And now we have pulled the West in to an Eastern ideological block, right? That mm -hmm. now we are in a position where how do we walk away? Like, what is the end game? What, what is the end game in bringing these other nations in as well and forcing forcing a call to action what this is going to do and this is this will solidify the russian people if not already behind putin in that we are now surrounded we are a cornered animal we need to attack yeah. so again when when i bring this up and the reason why i bring this up is uh the russian ruple went from you know it's it's static you know few i can't remember exactly what it was but it fell to zero like it was a dead currency there when they started all the, the economic sanctions right and it has been the number one rebounding currency in the world beyond doubt it is the number one top producing currency in the world since all this happened and i go why we've economically sanctioned the, this country we have made sure that they they are not able to do business all around the world why is the ruple why is it running hot it's because they're not losing Right. Right. And that, that that's if they were losing money, wouldn't be flowing into these nations. They're right. not losing because they're not they're not they're not in the war they that the media is telling us that they're in. They are in a specific position that they are very much in control of. And I'm very concerned that what we're doing now is we're bringing in other nations. Maybe, maybe this is a smart play. And maybe 50 years down the road, we'll look back at this and go, oh, that was what stopped Putin's you know aggression. But right. right now, it seems like you're 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 trying to corner them, and if there's a lot of accusations that are being put out there right now that Putin is not a well man, that potentially he has a, a rare form of blood cancer or some sort of bowel cancer, and that he's taking treatments for, this is not a guy that you want. He has nothing to lose, right? Right. So what my concern is is that, and, and if if he is the man that he is, which is been about legacy about showing himself yep. bare back on a horse he wants to show strength and power right so if he is on the way out like you're saying like reports are saying that he, he may be dying yeah this is the time for emperor to step up and start pushing you know you want when you die to yep. leave a legacy and if right. you're going to leave a legacy of owning the old like because ukraine was part of russia 
right? The former, former Soviet Union, Russia, absolutely, yeah. The former Soviet Union. So yep. he could be trying to rebuild that legacy so that when he passes away, he can be the one I think that I, reclaimed, you know. I struggle, I struggle with that because I, he, I, again, in knowing, so his background is that he was a former KGB, which is like an FBI agent, right? right. So after a the fall- more than an FBI agent, but I'll give you that. <laughs> well, but the, yeah, but that's us saying that, right? Like True. the Russians True. are like if, FBI agent, oh, is it or buddy, right? But so that was my Russian. Did I do it? it not bad. Is yeah, not bad. Write in right. the comments whether or not his Russian was right. good, and and we'll have him do it more. Uh, if that. you thought it was racist, I don't know. Can you be racist <laughs> making fun of Russia? I don't think you can. But anyway, go ahead. I'm pretty sure you're allowed to t- like quote <laughs> die Putin, kill Putin, die. Right? Like it's gone crazy. Yeah. But anyways, when when he was a f- after the fall of the Soviet Union, the guy drove cab. He came from a very poor family. Right. There's no question that that would leave, you know, a bad taste in anybody's mouth in the way that the Soviet Union fell, right? Mm-hmm. After the fall of the Berlin Wall and with Reagan, right? A, a Republican, just saying. Uh, so when you have this guy, I just don't think that he's that simple to be able to be like, he just wants the Russian former nations back. Right. The former show, he just, he wants to do that before he dies. Okay. I I don't think it's that simple. Right. And I I don't know what the end game is yet. And I think that Mm -hmm. I just know that where we are right now is that we're not getting the whole story. And we're we're definitely not getting the whole story. If you look at the, the, the wars that we've been in, we haven't, we are still just getting information about those wars. And uh, I I do see what you're saying. Like if we look at uh, Iran or Iraq or, some of the things that are that not ours, but the U.S. military has gone in. They've yeah. gone in with a sizable force, but it wasn't all of our what all of their force. Right. And so I could see what you're saying that maybe they're just going in with a, a part of their force, and uh, there is some in reserve. And uh, oh, there's no if, question. If I knew that, as yeah. you know, NATO, then maybe putting Finland in is a good move because then you know you can stop them from putting in more forces. Yeah. Because the, prob- they have to the problem worry is, about is other spots. The problem I, I is, just don't see Russia fighting on the south and the north. But that's that how they've be always mistake. fought. But it they've would be a mistake. Like but how successful have they been, been been when they fought like that? They've won everything. They, they, so <laughs> you go back to Napoleon. So Napoleon couldn't sure. conquer Russia, right? The right. War, and, and then we had okay. So the Russian weather obviously was a, was a problematic thing with Napoleon. You got Winter. a million guys yeah, you're yeah. walking across the the tundra, yeah. right? Uh, yeah. World War Two. Blitzkrieg, right? They they smashed through all of the other eastern parts of of the the country or of Europe, right? They broke through. They pushed all the way through to Stalingrad and got logged down. But you're talking about then, when Russia was attacked. When when a country is attacked is different than when a country is attacking. Well, a but country so okay, that so is they, attacked, right? A country that is attacked fights with its very life. If someone walked into my house right now with a gun, I would fight to the last of my breath to keep right my people alive but if if i'm going outward like if canada all of a sudden decided to attack america we kick their ass uh (laughs) i'm not joining that i'm not going for it i would say the majority of canadians probably wouldn't go for it they'd be like whatever but if if you were told walked into canada even the states i'm telling you every every red it de- Canadian it de- it under the flag would pick up a gun and fight. You, I don't you disagree. Fight your, so you're, you're talking about a different thing. I'm talking about an outward movement on both sides. When has Russia been successful? When has anyone been res- successful fighting two sides? Well, we were pretty close to goose stepping from the last guy that almost did it. Right. And part of the reason that we he was successful is he t- attacked, took a country, Everyone was like, ah, he's probably going to stop. We're going to ignore it. Right. Right. And yeah. that's what Putin's doing right now. So if we learn. No, from I past, think that's the media. That's the media. If we learn. He's from not doing past, that. But that's where that's where I, that's the problematic view is. I think that that's the narrative that the media is telling us is that Putin's coming in and he's going to take the Ukraine. But will it end with the Ukraine? And then it's going to be Poland. And it's like. I, I don't think so. I think I'm not a saying it is with the what I am saying right. is that that is what happened in the past in Germany. Yeah, but I don't think and- I don't think it can be as so indicative. Like, I really don't think that we're dealing with the same animal that we are like Putin is is not a great guy. And again, 
I'm sure Russians love him, but he's not a great guy, but he's not Adolf Hitler. Like well, the wants, I'm needs, not, demands, all those I am not are very comparing different. him to Adolf Hitler at all. I'm not right. saying that he is Adolf Hitler. What I'm saying is when you look at war and you want to, to, to uh, understand war, you c- kind of have to look at battles of the past. And no, I agree. Had, I agree. We have yeah. had someone who was a dictator, who was someone who wanted more for their country, moved out, took a country, and everyone around went, you know what, we're going to believe him. He's just doing that. And I just struggle with the narrative that it's that he wants more for his country. I, I right. very I very much do believe that this is uh, that the, the Ukrainians have problems in their own bed right. that Russia is calling out. Uh, I look at, you know, there's a water supply issue that was cutting off um, uh, the Crimea. The Ukrainians cut off water uh, stores that were starving farmers and their families out in the Crimea. This was the Crimea is an area where Russia had already annexed years ago, yeah. um, but they had set up canal systems to be able to, to cut off and block water. Well, these people are starving and, and dying of dehydration. The crops are, are not doing so is there something there? There's there's a lot of problems in the Ukraine. And I know that we don't want to talk about that at a great length in the West, because then then that goes, well, was it really our fight? Right. right. Um, but what we're doing at home here is a, a, a disservice to, to just general honesty in our conversation, I think, right now. And I, you know me, I've got a bit of a problem with media as it is. But sure. wh- where um, we are right now. I do as well. Right. Yeah. Where we are right now is everyone saved the world with putting the Ukrainian flag on their Facebook and God right. bless you for doing it. Right. Sure. But you didn't help. You didn't do anything and you don't know the whole story. So no. if you have a neighbor and you're flying the Ukrainian flag out in your front porch and your neighbor is, you know, uh, Chernowski, right. And you sure. know, whether big Russian family, I don't know, whoever uh, you're, you're picking a side, right. And here in Canada, you know, that flag that we fly is the Canadian flag is one of freedom for everybody. And that's the ideology that we've put out there. So to pick sides based on just media and, you know, BS, I don't, I don't know how we, we sit around and, and could even remotely think that the media is, is a fair and equitable process in, in the West anymore after everything we've seen over the last couple of years. Yeah, I, I don't think the media, the media always has an opinion now and always ha- picks a side and opinion, always pushes that's it, what kills me. Always piss, pushes an agenda, right. uh, usually political. And it, it is too bad because we're losing so much information because of it. Right. Um, and you have to get, you know, you, you really do have to get your information from many, many sources. I, I don't, I, I agree with you. I don't think we have the full story of Ukraine. Uh, I don't think uh, we will for quite a while. Uh, right. I don't hate to say it, but it's the victors watching, that write the history books. I don't think watching what I'm watching, uh, which isn't just local news, I you know, like I, I would say that people out there should uh, look more than just you know on the surface of your Google search because it's just feeding you what you want to hear. Do you still get the Taliban globe? <laughs> wow, <laughs> no, <laughs> I do not. <laughs> we're going to be on a watch list <laughs> now wow no i do not uh but i think uh it it's not going to be a world war i don't think russia wants a world war i don't think anyone wants a world war it's just so, in, world so going back to the finance too scary world wars become well. too expensive world wars now World wars do make money. Uh, like if you look back at Germany, the reason that Germany came out of a very starving depression was because of the war. And what are we going into? War. So I, I, do, <laughs> yeah. I do see what you're saying, but right. That's the, this is why I'm wondering if this is, this is going to be manufactured. Like I really, I really concerned now over the last 72 hours right. that this, this is a manufactured crisis and the drum beating is starting and I think, and, and I don't know, right? What do I know? But I think start watching the narratives change and pivots, right? Mm-hmm. This is going to be, we're going to show human rights issues. We're going to show, you know, atrocities. We're going to show this. And I, you, you and I have had conversations about this before, is that when for months and months and months, the Ukrainian people were sold to the world as they're picking up pitchforks and they're going to go after and fight and defend their cities. And you had grandma laying down and lining up sites on an AK, right? Yeah. And it's like... Well, if now you go into Kiev and there's a bunch of grandmas laying out on the street, they're not civilians anymore. And that's harsh. 
And that's a terrible thing to say, but you've marketed it to us as, you know, they're fighting for their wow. homeland. <laughs> we're going no, but there, that is, no, but that's the reality. Right. And we're, but what we're going to start to see is we're going to have grandmas. We're going to start seeing dead bodies and we're going to start seeing the, the atrocities. Right. Yeah. And they're, they're not grandmas anymore. When grandma, when you pick yep. up a gun, yep. you are now a combatant. If you, so, if, if you go to Iran and Iraq, and you know what, I have all due respect for any military, anyone who would give their life for a country and fight for their country, but we had children becoming military and not in our country, but you know, they come up yeah. with a bomb yep. and they'd blow up a, a base and it, it became dangerous. And, you know, so I, I see what you're saying that, you know, now because we're portraying grandmas as a possible threat to Russia, then. But now, but the Western media is going to start going, look at, Ru look at what Russia's doing. Yeah. They're killing men, women, and children. Yeah. It's like, well, but three weeks ago, we were standing around the world going, look at these Ukrainians, man. They are standing Every up man, and fighting. Every man, woman, and child is picking up a gun. I see, I see what you're saying. Right. Yeah, yeah. But, but yeah. watch how the media spins this. Sure. And this is where we're going to start to get the boom, 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 right. boom, 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 yeah. drum of war. Uh, yeah. We the finance side of this, folks, is that war solves all the problems. War creates your inflationary in for sure. Absolutely, yeah. war will solve all of the finance problems. Yeah. It would it it will explain why gas is running crazy. It'll explain mm -hmm. why all of costs of goods, and then they can point back and go, "We're doing this for the nation." Patriotism, you know, get leaner in your homes, and this is what they do. Yeah. So I'm very yeah, if concerned. If you look back to World War II, all the posters were. Uh, spend less, reuse things, yep. uh, you know, share your food, stuff like that. Uh, so, yep. so you're absolutely right. And that's kind of like, if you go back to one of the videos that Pat was talking about, he was talking about the recession and how what they're trying to do to stop the recession is stop us from spending money on useless things, you know, start spending money just on bread and all that. So right. a, a war or even the drum beats to a war I would start thinking about, you know, yeah. resources. Do you, might get do you go on the, do you go on the next vacation? Like if you're planning yeah. a trip to Europe, probably uh, not a good time. No. Right. Yeah. Uh, are, are you going to take that trip to Italy, you know, to see the Vatican? Are you going to go see the, you know, I would do, really do like the that. tour around? No, but are you? <laughs> no, 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 you're you absolutely see how this, right. It, absolutely we're going to shrink right. the world back down. Yeah. So mm -hmm. <sighs> Anyways, but these are all like just conjectures and thoughts right. uh, between two guys sitting around a dinner table. Like that's all this is, is us, you know, processing information that we're getting just like you. Uh, now we, uh, Pat and I get information from different sources uh, and, you know, we process it slightly different. Uh, I, I don't have as big of an aluminum hat as my friend Pat here, but, Tin foil. but I, but I have a little, you know, I, I do have a little one there, you know, so in all conspiracies, truth, truths are found. So right. uh, we'll see what happens in the next few days. We'll definitely be coming back in the next few days to talk about it again. Uh, I think uh, we haven't solved anything. We solved about as much as putting a flag on my Facebook would do. <laughs> you got her, pal. <laughs> well, folks, I think we'll leave it there for tonight. As always, thanks for joining us. And it's a pleasure. Like, subscribe, and share. Check out our uh, social media platforms, whether on YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, TikTok. Anyone else? We're all over the place. No, that's all it. All over the place. Yeah. That's good. Yeah. Well, folks, thank you again. And as always, Patrick from Soaring Profits and... James from Soaring Profits. I want to heal your mind, body, and soul. Well, this guy does. It wants to. Let's try to make some money together. Thanks, folks. <laughs> hey, folks. Thanks again for joining us at Soaring Profits. Patrick and James... Please like, subscribe, and share, and... And follow us on YouTube, TikTok, Instagram, and of course, uh, Facebook. And uh, let's start a dinner table discussion right on this page right here. Let's start talking about the topics that we're talking about today. Thanks again, folks. Appreciate it.